to PA Centered, a podcast designed to help listeners be a part of the solution to end sexual harassment, abuse, and assault. Each episode, we will take on a topic or current event to help spark conversation and break down barriers to building communities free from sexual violence. Hi, I'm Jackie Strom. I use she and her pronouns, and I am the Prevention and Resource Coordinator at the Pennsylvania Coalition Against Rape. I'll be your host today as we're joined by members of the state leadership team to learn more about the Pennsylvania Prevention State Action Plan. Kristen Herman is the Prevention Manager at the Pennsylvania Coalition Against Domestic Violence, where she and the prevention team are responsible for all things intimate partner violence prevention including training nearly 60 local programs and championing state-level efforts. When she's not working, Kristen is probably playing with her dogs or watching some competitive cooking show. And Joe Henson is the coordinator of Coaching Boys into Men at Domestic Violence Center of Chester County. Welcome, Kristen and Joe. Hi, Jackie. Thanks for having us. Yes, thank you very much. Well, I'm extra excited about this episode today because through my role at PCAR, I am lucky enough to be a member of the state leadership team and have been able to see the evolution, the growth, and all of the benefits of this team. And so to get us started, Kristen, can you tell us what the state leadership team is, what its purpose is, and how it got started? Sure, absolutely. So the mission statement of the state leadership team is to increase accessibility, for safe and healthy communities by pooling our expertise and influences as a multidisciplinary action team to increase funding, attention, and resources for the prevention of intimate partner violence in Pennsylvania. So essentially what that says is we're all getting together. There's a bunch of um, stakeholders from different sectors, different agencies to look at domestic violence prevention and what are the different roles that we all can play and how can we work together in this um, rather than siloing ourselves. That's awesome. And this is all funded through the CDC Delta grant, right? Yes, absolutely. So it started, the group started as a requirement for the CDC funding. We needed to put together a leadership team and we needed to build a five-year prevention plan. And so certainly that was not something that we at PCADV wanted to do by ourselves or in isolation. Um, So what the leadership team worked on probably for the first two years was just writing this plan together. So like you just said, Kristen, one of the main things that the state leadership team has been working on since its inception a few years ago is that creation of the statewide action plan. So can you talk about what it's been like to coordinate with so many different folks in the development of this plan? Yes, um, it's been very nerve wracking. It, uh, we all go to a lot of meetings. I feel like that's a pretty universal statement. And to ask a bunch of folks, that you don't always work with, um, and some of them that you don't know at all, to say, hey, wouldn't it be really cool if we all hung out once every other month for three hours and wrote a plan for the purposes of PCADV to get a grant? And so from my perspective, that, was, that wasn't that was gonna work for folks. You know, What's in it for them? What are we all gonna get out of this? Because otherwise, no one's gonna come, and then when the plan's done, you know, we'll lose, we'll lose folks. So, It took a lot of um, coordination, a lot of making sure that we're doing what we want to do for prevention, and also that we're building community with one another and getting to know one another. And so this, this team sort of started out as having these regular meetings, learning about prevention, how are we going to build this plan, what's our understanding, and then at the same time, eating lunch together, making sure that we're doing ridiculous icebreakers, like sharing uh, what your worst, what was it? Your worst hairstyle or your worst outfit choice that you Don't ever did. Don't forget the potatoes. <laughs> you know, thank you, Joe. I wasn't sure if we should bring up the potato one on the podcast, but uh, yeah, we had a, a creative break icebreaker one time that says if you were a potato what kind of potato would you be and it sounds ridiculous but we have been meeting for three years with the same 14 plus organizations and 
it's a lot to do with the fact that we are in relationship with each other and not just that we're doing work together. And these are icebreakers mm -hmm. that we all still talk about and things that we learn about one another and remember. And so I think sometimes it's nice to take a break from some of those really serious meetings. And even though what we're talking about is really serious, like we have that opportunity um, to just get to know one another on a personal level. So now that the state action plan has been written, Kristen, could you tell folks what we're working on now? Yes. So the first action plan we developed based on a needs assessment that we had done across um, Pennsylvania. So we hired an evaluator to look at any information that was already available. We tried to get as close to county level data as we could, and we looked at the risk factors for intimate partner violence or domestic violence at the community level, not at the personal level. And so a lot of what comes up there is poverty, um, economic wellness, housing availability and affordability. So we did a landscape of that, built the first plan off of that because it's important for us to understand what's going on and then take action as opposed to the, the reverse. So what we actually learned is that we have a lot more to learn, that there's not a ton of information out there, especially specific to Pennsylvania. And we certainly don't have as much information on rural communities, communities of color and people with disabilities who experience intimate partner violence in PA. And so what the, the leadership team is working on now is finding a way to um, engage, probably engage another consultant to go out into Pennsylvania and actually ask survey focus group, whatever it ends up being, um, folks to get input from people who are living in PA, from these communities that we don't typically hear from or, or learn about in the research because they're uh, marginalized and left out, then when we have that information, then we'll be able to take a look at it and say, okay, now what could we be doing? Where can we be offering supports to DV programs, other local organizations? And then also many of us work at a state level. If we're looking and we, we find more gaps, where at a state level now do we need to be making changes to the way that things are working? So we're really focused on the needs assessment. We're really focused on building some um, smaller action groups so that we can also simultaneously be, be doing things like bringing on new members or continuing to do trainings and collective learning at each meeting. So we have sort of those, I guess, forever focuses. And then right now we're pretty heavy into that new needs assessment. That's great. And so then it sounds like the plan is once we have more of that data we'll be able to make some more concrete decisions about how we're gonna work with those communities in order to you know, have that ultimate goal of preventing intimate partner violence. So one of the other things that I really love about the state, um, state leadership team and how we've been meeting is that you all really provided training for everybody about anti-oppression and the Thrive model. Um, and I feel like we've been able to see folks who never really have thought about this before in relationship to their work and are now champions to make sure that, you know, in every aspect of their work, even if it's working at a bank or something, that they are viewing it from an anti-oppression lens. And so I'm curious if either of you wanted to speak more to that. Well, I got all sorts of fun things uh, I'd love to say. Um, first of all, just the overall thing. Um, fortunately, I'm uh, not a coordinator. I'm a coordinate E um, of the SLT. Uh, but as uh, you were just saying, you know, working with people like in PA banking and securities and whatnot, and just all sorts of disciplines, bringing their different sets of knowledge to the table um, and working together to develop this plan has been eye-opening. Uh, simply because, you know, coming from a domestic violence center and thinking strictly in a certain framing, um, seeing what other people are doing, thinking, and so on and so forth, uh, you know, it's been 
well, quite advantageous for what we do in our own capacity, for what the SLT does in its capacity. Um, and it's been quite refreshing because, you know, whether we're talking about what potato will be or how we can reach marginalized communities, um, there's always something to be gained. Um, as far as the training and all that sort of stuff goes, so the CDC, who, you know, gives us our, our, our grant and whatnot, provides a grant, um, they do a yearly Delta, yearly, yeah, Delta meeting. And unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, you know, we had to do it from our computers instead of at home. But the CDC gave us an anti-bias training. And fortunately, due to the efforts of the SLT, I can certainly say um, that myself and DVCCC were well ahead of the curve. Uh, simply because this is something that we've been working on as a group for a while, numerous, uh, you know, numerous meetings and get togethers, we had discussed how to reach marginalized communities and underserved communities and, you know, how to improve our own efforts when it comes to racial bias, uh, racial equity, um, LGBTQIA plus communities, immigrant non-English speaking communities. I mean, that's just something that we as a group have been focusing on for so long that when we came to meet at the CDC, we were well ahead of the curve and we could actually contribute more than we took from the meeting, which is always a good feeling. Outstanding feeling as a matter of fact. It's a very outstanding feeling, especially on a national level like that, to feel like you're prepared to come to the conversation. That brings up for me, Joe, too, why it's so important to have diverse people, people, diverse identities of people, diversity in where people are coming from and where they're working, because the plan would not have been the plan that it is now without every single person that was on the team at one point or another, whether they're still with us or not, it, it just wouldn't have been. And so had we tried to do it in a different way, we really would have closed ourselves off and lost a lot of opportunities to do um, really good work. Absolutely. And so I know that um, for me working at the state level, I love getting to hear about what's happening at the local level too. And so Joe, um, you and your colleagues really do an excellent job of keeping us informed about the prevention work happening in Chester County. And so could you just share with folks a bit about how the state leadership team has impacted your work? Yeah, certainly. Well, like I said, I already touched on um, us sort of getting ahead of the curve from all the different trainings we have. Um, but it's, I mean, that can't be understated because not only at our own organization, are we trying to push ourselves further and further to get ahead of the curve on that? But the SLT is doing it um, as well. And so we can then both bring what we know to the SLT, bring what the SLT gives us to our local communities, um, especially because Chester County being a suburb of Philadelphia is extremely weird. The northern and eastern parts of the county, it's, it's somewhat suburban and even to a certain degree urban, whereas the south and the west are quite rural, mostly farms, and you have a, a great level of racial diversity, although there are some very interesting pockets. The city of Coatesville is uh, predominantly, you know, um, African-American or Black. Kennett and some of our Southern communities are somewhere around like 50 some percent um, Latino, Latina, Latinx, whatever your preferred terminology for um, those populations are. A lot of them are first generation immigrants. And so it provides a very wide range of, of communities, peoples, you know, races, ethnicities, so on and so forth, backgrounds that people come from. And so the things that we pick up at the SLT or the things we bring to the SLT really enhances all of our efforts all around. Um, and it's really great to work with everybody else because some people have similar communities to what we have in that they have rural communities. And since we're split between rural and suburban, and we don't always know how to maximize our efforts for both, uh, we can speak to people across the state and see what they're doing. And basically uh, a term that I picked up in the military, use it as a force multiplier. We can double and triple our efforts simply through learning best practices and refining the processes that we use. Uh, that we have a great time with everybody. <laughs> I love y'all. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Yeah, like 
I feel like I, I've never really lived in a rural area. And so having folks from the Center for Rural PA to be able to come and share with us data about what it's like living in rural PA and have that representation is, is helpful for us. So I feel like there are benefits for everybody because we're like constantly giving and receiving new information, new skills, um, and really building the capacity of like everybody who's on the SLT. And Kristen, I guess same question to you, how has being part of the SLT impacted your work? I think similar to what you said and similar to what Joe said, but as someone who's working at the state level, and so it's also our responsibility at the coalition to provide guidance to and support our local programs, working with so many different folks from so many different fields and areas in Pennsylvania have really broadened my perspective and my view of how things work and what different communities are like. Like you said, Jackie, I, I um, grew up in Delaware, the state, and when I did, it sort of started rural and very much has transitioned. So coming to Pennsylvania um, has been a very interesting experience for me because it is so different. And there are these, you know, very much unique pockets of communities all within the same area or county. Um, I think I mentioned earlier that we wouldn't be where we are with every single member of the team, without you, without Joe, because we need that feedback, right? It's, it's almost a relief to have a team like this because I don't have to know everything or do everything the right way. I have folks that I can come to and say, hey, here's what we're thinking. What do you all think about that? And they can give me feedback um, to make sure that we're sort of headed in the, in the right direction. So I think it's impacted our work that way. And I think someone mentioned the, the continued learning. We make a, we have a, we take or make an intentional effort to continue learning with each other as we're going. And a lot of the trainings that we've had have actually been provided by our own team members and the different expertises and um, experience that they bring to the table. So for me, it's been a very enriching experience. I think learning wise, it's been a very humbling experience, um, just broadening my perspective and, and getting to work with so many incredible folks. Um, and then just personally, you know, Joe said he loves us all. Thanks, Joe. I love you all too. And it is, it's, it's a relationship. I've built relationships. I've built friendships through this group and that that's been really wonderful. I think another thing that we have talked about is that trying to get people to like keep showing up in any kind of group you're putting together can be a real challenge. Um, and I, I really feel like it's been, it's been fun. Um, and so one of the things I'd love for, you know, maybe all of us to share is like, what are some of our favorite parts of being on the state leadership team? Um, so Joe, do you want to start with that? I, I would love to, and I hope you can't hear it upstairs. My neighbors are also working from home and uh, they're, they're definitely rolling something around up there. But uh, as far as some of my favorite parts of the SLT go, I mean, whew, I can sit here all day long. Um, first of all, y'all won me over. I was not a Panera uh, fan. I thought their food was boring and bland. Um, and although it's been a while since we've met in person, um, I got to say, I've, I've come around. I do enjoy Panera now. Um, I just think I was having all the wrong menu items. Um, but that being said, uh, <laughs> be it online or be it in person, um, you know, everybody comes to the table with their own unique experience and everybody is pretty chill about it. So, you know, it doesn't feel uptight. It doesn't feel overly structured. I mean, obviously we have a plan, we have agenda it's sent out in advance, but um, we roll with the punches and, you know, actually get stuff done without feeling stifled by formalities, which fortunately in this line of work, I haven't um, ran into too many issues like that, but you know, I did spend 11 years in the army. So, uh, you had a lot of, uh, this is the way it's done, no other way. Um, so it's been very refreshing to work with a diverse group of people from around the state 
And that's another very interesting thing is because, you know, in person, we would head to, to, to Harrisburg um, and it got a, it gave you a nice opportunity to get out of your office and go link up with people. And although we've, you know, unfortunately due to the pandemic, been doing it on Zoom, um, I do hope that the light is at the end of the tunnel and I will be seeing everyone in person again because uh, I can't tell you how excited I am <laughs> to link up with everybody in person. <laughs> um, so I think that speaks volumes right there. The fact that I have so much fun being in the same room with everybody from the group. <laughs> right. And that you're willing to be like, yeah, let me drive like almost two hours to, oh. you know, to get to this meeting that will take up my whole day. I really do think it speaks volumes about the kind of like space and environment and relationships that people have created. Um, and I know for me, like knowing that everyone in the room is so invested in the plan, like, you know, Kristen, even though you said this was part of a grant deliverable for PCADV, I think everybody that's on the state leadership team now is like, well, yeah, we want to see this through. Like we helped create the plan and it helped build buy-in. And so now that we're in that like action phase of trying to actually implement all of the things that we want to, I'm really excited to see, see where it goes. But yeah, Kristen, are there other things that you really like about the team? Yeah, absolutely. Well, just to that point that you said, you know, we're moving into action now. We <laughs> We actually got great feedback from the team I did at the last meeting, uh, actually from Joe's program that said, okay, we've been doing, you know, this little breakout group piece for a while. Let's, let's really focus on this and take this seriously in the next meeting. So I think also the community piece makes folks feel comfortable saying, hey, this isn't working for us. Like we got to try something different, but um, I really love Panera. I always have. Um, when you're trying to, you know, when you're trying to make food match with per diems and all these other requirements, it's, it's easy to have things like box, lunch, box lunches and whatever. But I mean, we have people excited, you know, placing their orders ahead of time and all that. So if you're able to get in person and spend time together, if you're able to find a way to feed folks, I know that's hard to do. Food is love, food is community. I don't think we pay enough attention to that in our fields and, and with federal funding guidelines that, you know, when you think personally and you get together with people and your friends and your family, you're eating, you're, you're sharing. And so for us to be able to uh, imitate that or create the same experience um, really was important. And then we would spend lunch just like talking to each other. So I was pretty nervous when, COVID happened and I knew we were going to have to be virtual for some time because I thought, dang it, what's going to bring folks in if not, you know, a free sandwich and cookie. But it really is just keeping with those, I'm telling you, the icebreakers and the creative breaks. I started those a while back and the best thing you can do is just not take yourself seriously. Like the more ridiculous, the better. If you're talking about being potatoes, that's going to get you a lot more responses and funny responses than, you know, I don't know, some other sort of traditional icebreaker. And we've done things in person, like let's take five minutes and try to do origami or stand across from a partner and then turn around and change three things about your appearance and turn back around and let's see if we can guess it. Just like anything that has absolutely nothing to do with what it is that we're working on right now is such a breath of fresh air. And I just find that, especially with this group, something will come up. We're always laughing or, or joking about something. And it's nice to see um, people making connections outside of their connection to the team. Absolutely. I think we've really taken something that's often very businessy and built a community of people who, even though this is a very serious topic, like we are very serious about preventing intimate partner violence, obviously, um, but this work is hard and challenging. And so making those opportunities to, you know, build those connections and relationships and have a little bit of fun, I think is, is what brings people or like lets people want to come back 
like they're excited about that. And yeah, we promise this isn't a Panera sponsored um, <laughs> episode, but for real food, food is like you said, Kristen, really important. So if there are other people listening who are like, I really, I can't get people to show up and come to my thing. Um, food and having some fun, I think are some great lessons learned, um, especially for a group that's been meeting for multiple years um, and we haven't lost participation. I think that speaks volumes to how, how this group really um, cares about the work that we're doing. And like we said, can have fun during it. Well, I was just thinking, you know, um, myself, I'm a creature of uh, ease, convenience, simplicity, right? I live a couple blocks away from my office. I'm working from home today. Why? Because it's easy. Yet, yet, I gleefully hop in the car and drive almost two hours to get to Harrisburg so I can meet up with everybody. So if a guy like me who enjoys convenience uh, <laughs> is willing to go through all that and sit, you know, most of, most, most of the work day um, in a meeting room with everybody and be excited to go do it, be thrilled, be just like pumped and overjoyed that I'm doing it. Um, I think that speaks volumes for, for, for the community that, that has been created with the SLT. So if there is anybody out there who's ever thought about joining it or, you know, is looking to become a partner or anything like that, um, in my opinion, if you're me, that's like the biggest selling point. That and the room, not everybody, but there's a lot of education folks in there who are well, I'm an outgoing introvert, so, you know, I'm not exactly an extrovert, but uh, we're loud, we're boisterous, and like to have fun, so that might scare some people, but at the same time, A, if you're uh, an introvert and don't want to talk too much, don't worry, we'll handle it for you, but two, you're bound to have a good time. <laughs> yeah, it's funny to see folks as they get comfortable sharing more, like just sharing more of their personal personalities and, and being vulnerable. Well, Joe, I think you gave us a great segue um, of how we want to wrap up. So if there are folks who might be interested in joining the state leadership team, how should they get in touch? And Kristen, can you share a bit about what that process looks like? Absolutely. So we're in the works right now, um, coming up with some subcommittees for the team. And one of them is going to be working on onboarding new folks and making sure that we are able to sort of train and mentor people into this team because most of us who are here all started together. And so we found that it's, if, if we're adding new folks and they're not supported in that same way, it can um, feel more isolating. So we're working on that right now. The best way that you can join or get more information is just to email me directly. And then I can keep you in contact with the team or the committee, whatever it is that we're working on now. Awesome. So yeah, if there are folks out there listening who are in Pennsylvania, they care about preventing intimate partner violence. And even if you work somewhere that um, isn't a traditional partner, um, we would love, love, love for you to reach out um, because we're always looking to diversify the folks on our team um, to figure out how we really can prevent violence in Pennsylvania. So yeah, Kristen and Joe, thank you so much for joining us today to talk about the state leadership team. Thank you for having us. Yeah, you guys are the best. I love this. <laughs> it's a fun walk down memory lane, reflecting yeah, on the last yeah. couple of years and um, all the fun we've had, but also all of the great work that we've accomplished. And so um, unfortunately, that's all the time we have today, but thank you all for listening to this episode of PA Centered. You can learn more about the state leadership team by contacting Kristen at kherman at pcadv.org. And then we're also going to have a bunch of links in the episode description where you can learn more about the state leadership team and the action plan that we put together. Mm -hmm.